Open Door Baptist podcast features the insightful preaching and teaching of our senior pastor, Jason Murphy. It also comprises of special messages from a number of guest speakers throughout the year. The purpose of this podcast is to be a witness in our community, to encourage others to grow in their relationship with God through the preaching and teaching of His Word, and to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm reminded as we think about some of the games and the rides and things we're going to be doing about uh, a couple, and their names were Bill and Blanche, and they went to a state fair every single year, kind of like many folks come to our freedom celebration, and every year Bill would say to Blanche, I'd like to ride the helicopter, and Blanche always replied, I know Bill, but the helicopter is 50 bucks, and 50 bucks is 50 bucks. One year, Bill and Blanche went to the fair, and Bill said, listen, I'm 75 years old, and if I don't ride that helicopter, I may never get another chance. To this, Blanche replied, Bill, that helicopter is 50 bucks, and 50 bucks is 50 bucks. The pilot overheard the couple, and he said, listen, I'll make a deal with you. He says, I'll take both of you for a ride, and if you can stay quiet for the entire ride on this helicopter, I won't charge you one penny. But if you say one word, it's 50 bucks. Bill and Blanche agreed, and they went up in the helicopter, and the pilot did all kinds of fancy maneuvers, but not one word was heard. He did all the daredevil tricks over and over again, but still not a word. When they landed, the pilot returned to Bill and said, by golly, I did everything I could do to get you to yell, but you didn't. He said, I'm impressed. Bill replied, well, to tell you the truth, I almost said something when Blanche fell out. (laughs) But then again, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. So we'll see what happens on some of the rides today. (laughs) Remember, it's only Baptist bucks today, so you don't got to worry about it. I want to share one verse with you today, and that's Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 22. And if you have a Bible, you can open to that passage. If not, they'll have it behind me on the screen. This will be my main text that we look at today, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 22. Would you notice, as the scriptures state in Isaiah 45 and verse number 22, it says, Look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this time and thank you for our freedom we have in this country. And I pray as we take just a couple minutes and look into your word, I pray that you'll not only grant us insight, but most of all, I pray if there's somebody that has graced these doors today, that has come upon this property, that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They don't know for sure they're going to heaven when they die. Maybe they've been exposed to religion or baptized as a child, but down deep in their heart, when they take their last breath, they don't know heaven is their home. And I pray today, They would put their faith not in religion, not in the Baptist church, not in their good works, but in the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as their only hope for heaven. And we'll thank you for it. And we'll be careful today to give you the honor and the glory for it's in Christ's name we pray and amen. There's a tendency on the part of Christians and and on preachers in particular many times to make salvation harder than it really is. And to be honest with you, terms are used that confuse people that may be unfamiliar with the scriptures. I want to talk to you about one word today and that word is salvation. To be saved. Saved is a Bible word. Now, I understand that you can be saved physically, you can be saved, uh, you know, mentally, you can be saved emotionally, financially, 
But I want to talk to you about that word salvation as it relates to your spiritual need. Keep this in mind. Any other type of salvation is temporary in nature. When a person experiences spiritual salvation, it's something that lasts forever. But somebody can be saved physically. It doesn't matter if they're 50 or 85 years old and they got cured of cancer. They may be cured temporarily, but eventually they're still going to what? Die. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. So everybody that can hear me right now at some point will take their last breath if the Lord tarries. I want to approach this verse and the subject of salvation by asking you three simple questions. Number one, if we talk about salvation, number one, where do you look to be saved? Number two, who should look to be saved? And number three, what is the result of looking? First of all, I want to just say this for the record. There are many things that cannot save you that religion will show you or teach you that can save you, such as church affiliation, baptism, denominations, things of that nature. They'll, they'll, they'll teach that those things can save you. But for the record, may I submit to you, the Bible does not say that in any way, shape, or form. Nowhere in the Bible will you find that from cover to cover. I also want to say that science cannot save you. Many look to science for answers, but listen, they call it the theory of evolution for a reason. Can I say that today? It's the theory of evolution. I want to give you an example here briefly, if I could. It's probably a base analogy, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I was witnessing to a guy just a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to him about salvation and what it means to be saved. He was an atheist. He told me, I don't believe in, in, about God at all. I believe in evolution. And he explained to me how evolution works, and he used a cell phone as an analogy. And he said, you understand there was once the first phone and the second phone. And so I went ahead and, and asked a few of our folks if they had some older phones. And so uh, I've got this one here. I've got, the, I've got the flip phone here. Okay, don't laugh. Some of you still have these. I know, I know you do. Sometimes I wish that's what I had. Um, then you've got over here the, the Samsung or the Android or whatever. And then you've got the iPhone, which is, you know, it's like a cult-like following for the iPhone 3 or 4, whatever that is. And then you've got the, uh, the 5 or the 6. Okay? And so you have this. And he started giving me the analogy. He said, now listen to me. Don't you understand? Look at evolution and how it works. You have the first cell phone. And keep in mind, I appreciate Brother Jones loaning this to me. Um, the battery pack is like twice the size of the phone. And you were actually cool if you brought this, you know, had this back in the day, driving down the road, hello, he's got a cell phone, you know. Kids, kids, I had a rich kid in school, you know, he brought it to school and the, carrying the battery pack and it was just absolutely hilarious. And, but you were cool. So he was explaining to me the progression. He says, don't you see the evolution process and how it works? And I, I thought about it for a minute. I said, wait a sec. Yeah, but don't you understand that somebody designed these phones? Can I get an amen? amen? So having said that, you're gonna look at me and be intellectually honest, honest with me and tell me that, that God created the heavens and God created the earth and God created the complexity of the human body all the way from the kidneys to the heart to the retina of your very eye and tell me that there's not intelligent design behind that? some cosmic bang and so on that we won't get into today? I said, there's no possible way. Somebody designed these. And may I say, somebody designed you. The Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Jeremiah says that God knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Oh, I forgot this one over here. This is actually, I got this from some guys at work. This is actually, the, the, this is the iPhone 7. I got this one here. It's coming out and pretty soon and you know I guess that would be cool or not I don't know <laughs> Isaiah on a serious note seriously Isaiah 45 verse 22 very simple verse look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth and I am God and besides me there is none else now keep this in mind is it fair to ask then if we were to follow the logic of the cell phones or what have you just just as a side note where's the missing link 
Is that fair? Well, you don't understand, billions and billions, I know, billions and billions of years. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you and created you in his image. And the Bible says the, fo the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I'm reminded of a story of an atheist who was taking a walk through the woods and admiring all that evolution had created. What majestic trees, what powerful rivers, what beautiful animals, he said to himself. As he was walking alongside the river, he heard rustling in the bushes and he looked behind him. There was a seven foot grizzly that was running towards him. He ran as fast as he could and he looked over his shoulder and he saw that the bear was closing in on him. He, his heart was pumping frantically and he tried to run even faster and he tripped and he fell to the ground. And he rolled over to pick himself up and he saw the bear right on top of him reaching down to take a swipe at him. At that instant, the atheist cried out, Oh my God! Time stopped. The bear froze. The forest was silent. The river stopped moving. And a bright light shone from heaven. Spoke to him and said, you deny my existence all of these years. You teach others that I don't exist. You credit creation by some cosmic accident. And I'm to help you out of this predicament. Am I to count you now as a believer? And the atheist looked directly into the light and said, I guess it would be kind of hypocritical for me to ask you to help me since I've denied you my whole life. He said, but perhaps maybe you could make the bear a Christian. Very well, said the voice. So the light went out and the river ran again and the sounds of the forest resumed. And then the bear dropped his right paw and brought his, le brought his left paw together and bowed his head and said, Lord, thank you for this food that I'm about to eat. <laughs> Truthfully, uh, I don't believe there's really any a real atheist. I don't believe it to be true. Uh, I think everybody knows down deep God is real. Everybody knows down deep. And the Bible says you can look and you can live. Isaiah 45, look unto me, that's God. Look unto me and be saved. I want you to understand this morning, if you would, that this verse in Isaiah 45 is crystal clear. There's no doubt that God says salvation can only be found in him. There's no other path, there's no other way, there's not a system, there's not a 12-step program. It's looking to Jesus Christ. It cannot be attained by your good works. None of those things can save you. God's plan is an exclusive plan. Acts chapter four and verse number 12, listen carefully. The Bible says this, Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be What's the last word? Saved. Saved. Listen, I'm going to heaven today for one reason. And that is not because I'm a preacher or because I'm good. It's because he good, he's good, and he saved a dirty, rotten sinner like me. That's why I'm going to heaven. So keep in mind, if you must have a million dollars to be called a millionaire, then you must have Christ to be called a Christian. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I'm going to heaven because Jesus Christ is my Savior. And I want to say today, again, for the record, that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Have you come to the source of salvation? Are you still trying to get there another way? Stop trying to do what's already been done. Secondly, notice who should look to be saved. Who should look? Isaiah 45 and verse number 22. Notice it says, look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I can understand when God says all the ends of the earth, he means everybody. So you may be sitting here today, you're like, you know what, I, he's got about 10 minutes left. I'm going to go eat some hot dogs, hamburgers, and uh, cotton candy, and snow cones. The kids are going to play the games, and that's all fine and good. But I'm here to tell you the reason we even have this event is so by the grace of God, we can let people know that Jesus still saves and point you to the Savior. That's our desire. 
is if maybe you're here today and you know down deep you're not a Christian, you know down deep that if you were to put your head on the pillow tonight, you don't know heaven is your home, that you will understand the simplicity of salvation and put your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is made clear. Revelation 22 and verse 17. Revelation 22, verse 17. Would you look at this verse? And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that is a thirst come. Are you thirsty today? And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Are you a whosoever? Then you can be saved. You see, regardless of the path you've taken, regardless of where you've been, the Bible makes it clear that he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. That can be the drunk on the street or the rich in their palaces, the poor and unlearned or the men of degree. We all have a soul, amen, in need of salvation, but you all must come by Calvary where Jesus died to pay for your sins. There's not a single person in eternity that will ever be able to come to God and say, I tried to get saved. I tried to come to God. I wanted to be saved. I asked to be saved. That, cannot, that, 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 that is not saved. Because he says, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Lastly, would you notice in your notes, this is the last thought I want us to consider today. What is the result of looking? What happens today on June 26 of 2016 if you say, you know what? I think I believe what God is saying here and I know down deep I'm not saved. I need to look and be saved. What will be the result? Isaiah 45 and verse 22, that's our text. The Bible says, look unto me and be ye saved. You know what happens when you finally look, not to religion, not to a denomination, but when you finally look to Jesus and his finished work, you are saved. You're saved. It doesn't say look unto me and be baptized. It doesn't say look unto me and join the church. It doesn't say look unto me and pay your tithe. It doesn't say look unto me and live right. Look unto me and turn over a new leaf. It says look unto me and be ye saved. Sometimes salvation is so simple that people trip over it. They have a hard time believing it can be so simple. Salvation is not a matter of holding on or your ability to change. Get that out of your mind. Come to Christ and then the change begins. A businessman brought a 33-year-old man to a summer Bible conference. He was paralyzed from his waist down. And they were sitting there and the, the guy that was paralyzed said, listen, I've read the whole Bible and I've read it cover to cover. I've read the whole thing and I believe it, but I don't feel down deep in my heart at all that I'm going to heaven when I die. And the man looked at him and he says, well, have you ever trusted Christ as your savior? And he says, well, no, I never have. I've read the Bible but, and I believe in God, but I've never accepted God's free gift. And, and the guy looked at him and he said, well, you see that bus? He says, this bus, is it taking everybody to the Bible or to, to the conference? He says, well, not exactly. He says, well, you're right. It's only going to take those who get on the bus. And all of a sudden, the man realized, it dawned on him at that moment, it's intellectually I know what's going to happen, but I got to get on the bus. And he bowed his head and trusted Christ as his Savior and got saved. It's that simple. The fact is, anyone can look, but listen, nobody can look for you. Nobody can look for you. Nobody can look for you. You must look for yourself. You have to do it yourself. The question is, have you and will you? Here's the gospel. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. That's the plan of salvation. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the question is, have you appropriated that? Have you received that? You must look for yourself. There was a little fellow that was returning home from a store with a pail of honey in his hand. And a gentleman began to walk next to him and he saw the little boy with the, with the pail of honey. And the little boy stuck his finger in that honey. And his mom always said, well, don't wipe it on your trousers. And so he thought the logical destination for that was just to put it in his mouth. So he started putting it in his mouth and tasting the honey. And the man said to him, is the honey sweet? Little boy said, yes, sir, it is sweet. He said, how sweet is your honey? And he says, well, it's very sweet, sir. He said, I don't think you understand. He said, how sweet is your honey? Very sweet? He says, yes, it's very, very sweet. 
And finally, the man asked him one more time. He said, well, why don't you just tell me how sweet is your honey? He looked at him. He says, well, dip your finger in here and try it out for yourself. And you know what? The Bible says this in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. Some of you know intellectually, but you've never tasted for yourself. May I even say you've never gotten on the bus. And if you're here today and not saved, I've been praying for weeks that God would deal with souls. I don't care what their religious background is, how long they've been going to church, what their affiliation is, how good they think they are. All have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Guess what, folks? We're all sinners in need of a Savior. Amen. The question is, do you have him? And only, only you can answer that. Let's bow in prayer.